Keys' combo here in Historic. This is, um, the thing I think I should address right away is, the question I think a lot of folks have surrounding this deck is, is this just a worse Underworld Breach deck? And I think the answer to that question isn't that it's just strictly worse so much as it's different. So the Breach deck is fairly all in on its combo, whereas this deck with Uro plus Laziv and Kesis and things like Ruinous Blast and Tamiyo to generate card advantage, while the actual combo aspect of this deck is less linear and a little bit less consistent than the combo aspect of the Breach decks, I think this deck's fallback plan when your combo is being picked apart by interaction is a lot more resilient. I don't have empirical evidence to back that up, but that's what my feeling my feeling is from having played both a little bit. Now, how does this deck actually work? So Keys is the Hidden Hands here, our namesake card. It says, exile two legendary cards from your graveyard. Until end of turn, each legendary card in your graveyard gains. You may play this from your yard. So we pair this with Diligent Excavator here, which says whenever you cast a historic spell, target player mills two cards. So we use this along with mocks and lots of other legendary things, and utilizing Kesis, we cast these mocks over and over from our graveyard again, eventually decking ourselves, and then when our graveyard's nice and stacked, we're making black and white mana with these mocks while we stack our graveyard, then we cast Othakaya again and again and again to deal three damage to our opponent until they die. Now, we can also win the game by milling our opponent with Diligent Excavator, and post-board, we have a copy of Jace Wielder of Mysteries to win the game this way. Um, the reason why this deck plays Jace as opposed to Thassa's Oracle is because Jace is legendary, and Kesis lets you cast legendary cards. So, let's go ahead and uh, look up the daily deals first here really quick. People are asking for them. Daily deal says... Uh, I don't think I'm ever gonna put Revenge of the Ravens in a deck, so I'm gonna I'm gonna save my two booster packs worth of gold. Have have the rest of them. Let's pop on into a traditional historic event here and see how this goes. Hey, thanks for the seven months, Reclaimer. Welcome back. Thalia makes Mox Amber cross one. She does. She does. Thalia, Thalia will be a good hate card for fighting these decks. Oh, you know what? I should lead on Breeding Pool or Overgrown Tomb here. Because if I draw Laziv, I can't cast him on two with leading on Temple Garden. Small, small things like that to keep track of. Hey, Austin, thank you for the 19 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Looks like opponent's playing Blue Red Phoenix. They discarded a Arc Light to the Tormenting Voice here. Hey, David, thank you for the 13 months. I appreciate you keeping me around. Uh, I think, I think I'm just doing this. We ditched a, uh, ditched an Uro there. Is Waste Not too cute for a Croxa deck? Yeah, I think so. I don't think that card's actually very good. I'm sure someone will pay me money to play that card at some point, but I do not think it is good. So we're looking for Mox and Kesis at this point. Wow! They had... Never forget, chat! The shuffler's as rigged as the earth is flat. It's coming for ya. Scale one to dead. Where's this, uh... Wow, okay, so we're getting pretty punished for not playing Tefri. Although I suppose if I had played Tefri... 
There's a second Phoenix here too. Okay, so we're we're hoping so even if I draw a land, they're gonna kill Tamio, right? Yeah, we've played Emery in this deck before. I don't really know. In fact, I don't think, I, I just straight up don't think that there's room for Emery in this archetype while also playing Uro. And in, in my opinion, I think the strength of playing this build over the Breach build is that you're a little bit better mid-range deck. So I think I'd rather lean into Uro to make my mid-range plan better as opposed to leaning into Emery to make my... um my combo plan better. I feel like at this point with Breach existing, if your goal is to have a more linear deck, you should just be playing the Breach deck as opposed to playing this one. I think once upon a time, Emery was fine and you can make a reasonable argument for including it, but I think that time has passed in a post Underworld Breach world that we're living in now. I expect we'll see them cast an opt here and diddle my Uro. That's why they played Gadwick out. Gadwick's a neat inclusion in their deck. So then I think I just want to ruin his blast here. Let's go ahead and smoke the pigeons. Bye, friends. Whee! Every time you say once upon a time, I cringe. Is that normal? Yeah, probably. How's it going so far? Good, C Lab. We actually had we had a really good set for Pioneer this morning. We played a mid range deck that was a lot of fun and also felt reasonably competitive. Hopefully, they don't have a spell pierce here. If they have a spell pierce, I get a little bit punished for leading on my excavator. But I do also think it's important to like get cards into the bin here. Alright, we found a key, sis. That, that'll happen in bigger formats like this, especially when they're newer. I mean, Bloomberg went on national television and promised to spend money helping to elect whatever Democrat got the nomination. So, hopefully he, he wasn't lying about that. They have like a brazen borrower here? They do, okay. Hey, I can sit here and keep casting Uro all day, opponent. And again, just like the kind of mid-range backup plan on full display for our deck, like, both Uro and Othakaya just gaining us incredible amounts of life here. Making it difficult for our opponent to actually pressure us while disrupting us. Like, they are disrupting us, but they're also not pressuring us. Yeah, wow, we haven't we haven't hit a mox in the top half of our deck, have we? We're 31 cards in without a mox. Alright, we get to draw a lot of cards here. My man is super awkward at the moment. Am I just supposed to kill this? I feel like I'm just supposed to kill this, huh? I 
I could get greedy and cast this Uro, hoping to draw an untapped land, but if I miss on the untapped land, I take another hit and I haven't really made anything. If I had double black, we'd just Laziv into Oath easy peasy. Nah, I'm gonna get all. Parties don't mean much these days. That's not true in the slightest. It's a part. It's it, in fact, I'd argue parties. I, I'd argue parties are more relevant than ever. There's there's a reason why there was only one R R name that voted to censor President Trump for the things that he did that were not okay. I don't think that's strictly true either, Hacksaw. Because, like, I think, I think in fact, you could say that while they didn't prevent Bloomberg from running as a Democrat, the success that he had in proportion to the amount of money he spent kind of shows that, like, the things that he represents aren't welcome in the Democratic Party. Phoenix of Ash seems sweet in their deck. It's another good recursive card. Gives them a mana dump in the late game like this. Like, this card's going to kill us really quickly, huh? What do I want to do here? I have a couple different paths at this point. I think because I'm at 21, I think I'm going to lead on this. There's 18 cards in my deck. I think I'm going to do this. Actually, are there only 16 cards in their deck? Can I deck them? Is it crazy to cast this and target them? Like there's only there's only ten cards in their deck, right? I'm gonna pick Kesis back up from my bin now. Like even with their best of plays, I'm pretty unlikely to die from twenty one next turn. Famous last words. And like if they don't deck, if they don't kill me, they need to kill like two of these. Like they're at ten cards, and like whatever they do is probably gonna involve churning through cards in their deck, right? Chad is always going to say deck them. Does deck feel less consistent than breach deck? Yeah, if you if you if you watch the opening of this video, I talk about how this deck is a worse combo deck than the breach deck, but it's a better fair deck. And like this game's kind of highlighting that, right? Like I'm winning this game not because I comboed. My moxes were all like in the bottom third of my deck. We won that game because we had a fair game plan, right? I think I think that important distinction is very very important. Like we we won that game on the back of Othakaya and Uro Nature's Titan, and then being able to mill them fairly. So remember, of Chad, is there any way you can tech them and destroy their lands? Yeah, Ruin his blast is very good in this matchup. Is it crazy to board out Tefri? I feel like it's not. I guess they do have two. They did show us a couple of finales. I feel like this is not crazy. I don't know that Ego's good enough here. Ego's like, Ego's like mostly in my sideboard for like Nexus of Fate. And like they have, they have a couple of, 
they have a couple of different threats, right? They have they have two different Phoenixes and they have Brazen Borrower. I'm gonna board like this and see how it goes. They might bring in Niv Mizzet against us if only because it doesn't die to Ruinous Blast. If they have access to that card. I don't think that's an unreasonable card for them to bring in. This hand's a little bit on the looser side. Ashiok's a great draw because Ashiok will fill up my graveyard for Uro. No, you're mixing up formats. Nexus is banned in Pioneer. It is not suspended in Historic. That's true. That is actually true. It's banned in best of one. To further to further confuse you, Nexus is banned in best of one historic. That that's true. I forgot. I forgot about that asterisk there. How's my day going? The magic is going well. The politics not so much after yesterday, but you know, we have time. We have time to recover. Actually, the pioneer deck this morning is gonna make the favorite decks playlist. Which is not something that's happened a whole lot recently. couple different plays I can make here. It might even be right to just like Ashiok mill myself for four exile their graveyards. That way their graveyards clear before I kill their pigeon. Because like they do just get to escape their pigeon back next turn is worth noting here. Whoa, that's great. Alright, so I'll get to... Uh, We'll get to go Ashiok down tick now and mill their graveyard or get rid of their graveyard. So again, even if I mill myself with Ashiok, their graveyard still goes away. Yeah, maybe dude light. I didn't I didn't stop and count that way because Twitch chat wanted to mill them. I would I would believe you that there was a path to guaranteed lethal in the last game. I mean, even when they second Phoenix here, I get to Uro, and then like, if Uro sticks around, I get to Ruinous Blast. Man, do we need Uro to stick around, huh? Oh, you know what? I should shock in a land so I don't get Mystic Disputed. Pioneer this morning was Red Black Pyromancer. Red Black Croxa. And it had Pyromancers and Croxas in it. Yikes, feels magic, man. Feels. Feels magic, man. All right, step one, didn't get Brazen Borrowered. They did shock in a second land earlier, so there is a chance that they have, like, Nagi. Oath does not let you cast legendary spells. That is correct. All right, hoping for a cheap legend. Even an expensive legend? We have a ton of mana. <sighs> I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. We are very dead. Yeah, I'm just gonna run it back. Let's get a little, let's get a little bit, a little bit luckier in third game. Take it on the play. Oh yeah, they can always hear me on the next floor. Part of, part, part of the reason why we're soundproofing. The, office, the new office when we get it done eventually is that they want to not hear me just as much as I'd like to not hear the kids while I work. Not hear the air conditioning unit. Not hear the toilet in the bathroom up above me. Sounds super reasonable.
Yeah, and Storks had a lot of sweet things going on. Hopefully, hopefully it stays sweet once it matures some more. The fact that, like, they're adding... The fact that this format is getting new cards every six weeks, basically, instead of every three months, also is going to keep it fresh for longer. Just getting started with Kisa. We've been on this one for about 20 minutes. Pi Pioneer actually lasted... Actually lasted the full time this morning. Uh, no, this is just Kisa's combo singer. This is based off of the deck when it was standard legal. Yeah, we're, I don't plan to replace the air conditioning unit. Like, the sound of the air conditioning unit will be a non-issue once I finish my office. Like, definitely, definitely don't spend, don't plan to go drop five, six, or ten grand or whatever it costs on a new AC unit until the one outside dies. Ranked Historic Q should be returning on... Uh, should be returning uh, whenever... Whenever that is. Ranked Historic Q will be returning March 12th. We should also be getting an update regarding Historic uh, tomorrow. They said the state of the game update... The next state of the game update on March 5th would be talking about Historic. Abel, Abella Ariana, thank you for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoaglandia. Yeah, Thursday next week should be when we get the ranked queue back. Thursday tomorrow, we should be getting a state of the game update talking about historic. Yeah, Singer, our deck is mostly legendaries, and this is a matchup where I board in all four copies of Blast. Like, we have two in the main and two in the board. You know, I have to say, Punchworthy, one of the one of the biggest positives to playing Raid is Raid has actually reduced my time spent on Twitter considerably. When I when I idly want to do something on my cell phone for a few minutes as opposed to scrolling social media, I open that and like play through a level or do a couple of arena battles. Hey Corvmux, thank you for the 20 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, so I think we just name Runus Blast here. I think you will find my note. All right, we swung in, we missed, but I do get to escape Uro at least. Do I want to escape Uro? Do I have anything else useful to cast from here? I don't. Yeah, let's just escape Uro. Play as if extra Uro, extra Kesis. I want to leave the second Uro in my bin because they do have Lava Coil they showed us. Okay, there's a Mox. If they can't deal with the Uro, this could be a game that we end up winning fairly. I target a Dream Trawler, it discards to gain Hexproof. After that resolves, I activate Shadow Sphere to remove Hexproof to the original spell. It does not, because the, the original spell doesn't target if it's, doesn't check if it's a legal target until it finally resolves. So if you strip Hexproof from it before your spell resolves, your spell's going to resolve as normal.
Walker M, thank you for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. I assume Burb is going to kill Tamio here. And then Gadwick's going to stop Uro for a turn. That's not too big of a deal because I have Othakai to take him down. Adel Red Ranger, thanks for the half a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, I don't know what that card does offhand, Walker. So, as always, if, you, if you're wondering, will Jeff play X? You should always ant find the answer to that question by submitting it using the form on my website. Hey, GD Squared. Thank you for the very generous tier two resub and for the fourth month of that. Welcome back. Really? They have Brazen Borrower? Okay. Oh, and they're just getting rid of both? So, I guess I could just replay Uro here without playing this, but I could just play Mo I could float mana, play Mox, play Tamio. What do we think of that? I kind of like that, right? I don't have enough mana to do that, Lizzie. Oh, you're saying don't Othakaya? Um, I think it's pretty unlikely that we combo from here with one Diligent Excavator, and we're not really under any sort of pressure, so I also think, like, being aggressive to try and find Excavator doesn't make a lot of sense, or to, like, try and go off. Yeah, of course, Bloomberg, Bloomberg was only running to try and make sure the nominee was not, not Bernie. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to try and go off there, though. Like, I'm at 22. I'm killing them by playing a fair game of Magic. I've got this tam Tamiyo to generate more value. When, you, when you're asking yourself, should you put yourself in a position to try and go off, you should also ask yourself, like, do you need to go off? Like, should you take a risk? Is that risk necessary? And in that situation we were in, I definitely don't think the risk is necessary. This, this deck isn't about being unfair. This deck is about being a mid-range deck that also happens to combo. If you want to be unfair, I agree that that's fun sometimes. I would definitely recommend being playing the, uh, the what's it called deck, though? The Breach deck. I agree, Elvis Reclaimer. If they had spent half, half this much effort in 2016, they probably could have could have won the, the general election. We bottom these. Notably can't cast this, but I think it's still right to keep. Maybe maybe the fact that my lands don't cast this mean I'm supposed to supposed to play what's keep Tameo there instead. Hey, thanks for the three quarters of a year, just John. Welcome back. Zombie! Thank you for the quarter of a year. You think Warren will, will endorse Sanders? I would be very surprised if Warren drops or endorses Sanders, but I'd also be very happy to be wrong. I feel feel like based on based on her current actions, I would be surprised if that happens. Bernie no longer has a delegate lead. He is not. Things are not by any means over. Bernie's not in any more trouble now than Biden was in, you know, a week ago. So a lot of delegates to be won. 
That that feels like what she's doing, right? If if Warren isn't running for the sole purpose to siphon votes from Bernie, she will drop and endorse him at this point. Why do young people refuse to go and vote? Because a lot of young, speaking from personal experience, and obviously this is my personal experience, so maybe it's not reflective for all young people, but I think a lot of people in the United States grow up in a culture where they have it beaten into their head that they're all the same and it doesn't matter, so why should you bother to show up and vote? And when you, when you hear that every election cycle, year after year, you kind of take it to heart and think it's true. If you don't actually step outside of your bubble and see how the world actually works, that, that feels like the truth. I think it would be incredibly sad if the two people we have to choose between for president of the United States are a uh, deranged uh, racist and bigot or just someone who's just kind of kind of senile. I don't I actually tweeted last night. I don't understand how anybody could look at Joe Biden and watch him give a speech and come away with the conclusion. Yeah, this is someone that I want to be president. This might be a little bit aggressive to attack here, but if they want to trade these off, I think I'm okay with that. I don't I don't think that's fair, Bob. In fact, one of the reasons why Biden did so well yesterday is because young people didn't vote. I believe I believe in a lot of states it said the, the young person voter turnout was lower than 2016 even. So as someone who, again, is not just some idiot biased Bernie bro and can look at reality, it looks like based on Super Tuesday that Bernie did in fact fail to rally younger people that we thought would rally to him. Like, it sucks to say that. That's not the reality I want to be living in. But that's definitely what looked like happened. We did, Wolfie. Good riddance. Right, I hit a couple. I hit another mox here. I don't have almost any legendaries in my bin, though, huh? What if I turn this into another excavator? If I turn this into another excavator, there's a chance I can win from here, right? I could play this, but I could also turn this Laziv into an excavator. And then like play Mox, play Fibblefip and mill eight and maybe do stuff from there. I think that's the line. I think I think we're losing we're losing the beatdown play from here, right? So I think we activate this, exile these two. Yeah, I have no idea, Bob. So this mills me a bunch more. Okay, there's another Fibblethip. This draws me a card and gains me some life. We're gonna bottom anything that's not a legendary here. That's a legendary, so it stays. Now we activate Kesis again. Exile a Ruinous Blast, exile an Uro. We might also be able to generate enough mana to just Ruinous Blast them here. There's only 23 cards in my deck. I think we're getting, we're getting close to deterministic here.
Did your keyboard arrive? I don't think so. Maybe. There was a package in the garage that I didn't open that Christy brought in. I was busy being sad last night. Okay, and then again, the way we actually win game one is... Yeah, I think the, I think the other mocks means we're good here. So now we start making white and black mana. And we win the game by casting Oath of Kaya again and again and again, killing our opponent. So I don't have a Jace in the main deck, but I have Oath of Kaya. And again, the upside to playing Oath of Kaya as your win condition is the fact that um, it doubles his interaction. This is a turn five kill? Yeah, this is a turn five kill, right? Hey, thanks for keeping me around, Face Masker. And as I often say, people don't quit magic, they mostly just take breaks, so you'll be you'll be read, ready, set to go when you do decide to dip back in. So one of these will point at me, there's two cards left, and then I can start milling them here to learn what's in their deck. We can also, also win the game by decking them. So all of these are going to start pointing at them because I get a bunch of triggers while I make mana here. Generally, generally people concede at this point because they're technically spewing information. Like making, making me click through this. Like they, they should be able to see that they're deterministically dead and they're going to concede to make me, let me not see their deck. No, they're, they're deterministically dead there. Legion's End, Noxious Grasp, a couple of Ruinous Blasts, Toll Smear sounds fine. Tamio's not stellar here. Um, I think Uro's actually kind of medium. How is survey participation? Sur to be fair, survey participation's about as sad as uh, voter participation in the U.S. I think we have... As of, as of this very moment, there were 616 survey responses. And for context, I currently have 2,400 unique subscribers. Uh, there is not a link to the survey in chat because it is for subs only. It went directly to your email or you can find the link in the announcement channel on the subs discord. All right, I need five cuts here, which is a lot. I kind of feel like I'm supposed to leave Tefri in because it's fine against... It's fine. He's fine against... Uh, what's it called? Um, History of Benalia. I feel like maybe maybe that's not true, though. I think Uro's maybe slightly better. I want to keep Fibblethick because it's a cheap card that enables Ruinous Blast and Mox Amber. Maybe Legion's End and Noxious Grasp is too much interaction here. I might I might be overboarding. Let's split these two, two. And we go to three, three blast. Yeah, yeah, in fact, I actually haven't had time to sit down and go through all the individualized feedbacks. In addition to a couple of short answer questions, I also do a free entry field at the end. So if you haven't uh, if you haven't filled it out, I'm definitely going to read, read all the stuff that goes in there. Um, there is a legal maximum that you're allowed to donate to a political campaign in a year, Cody. So I would assume it could possibly be illegal if it's above that. Yes, correct. Being an organ donor and voting should both be opt out, not opt in. Big, big agree. Our lack of black mana here is likely going to be the death of us. Milled. In peak magic fashion, we milled two black sources with that diligent excavator trigger. Word cloud the entries. Ooh, that's a good idea. That's not something I've ever done before, Bob. 
I usually like control F and like count, I count trends manually, but word clouding, it's a good way to do that at a glance. They have like a shock here, they just look like a free attack. Huh. That's a pretty good one. So if I do this, I can chump block here, and then I take four, eight, 12, 16, and I don't die. So if I draw an extra land here, and I keep Fibblethip in play, I could Urza's Ruinous Blast to survive this turn. Okay. So, if they draw a brick, I believe I can chump block one of these, go to, go to one, and then untap and blast the board. Or sorry, go to two, I get to block the five power creature. And then like, there's six cards in my bin already. So like, if they, if they brick again next turn and don't kill me, I get to escape Uro and get back in this game, right? Bye, friends. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we about to stabilize, Jet. One could, one could argue I am, in fact, a very stable genius. Really, just again, like talking about the strengths of this deck versus, versus the other build, right? Like, I really feel like this match did a good job of highlighting what this deck is doing that's meaningfully different and better than the Underworld deck. Super, super impressive for Kisis there. I think this deck's a lot of fun. Just a good, good range of things. I'd be surprised if Yang was a VP pick. I feel like Warren could potentially be angling for a VP slot. Uh, Stacey Abrams is a name that's gotten tossed around a lot as well. Well, from my understanding, California often takes a long time to call because of how their mail voting system works. Ooh, Castro would actually be a good pick. I think the only problem with that is Castro endorsed uh, Warren would be the issue. Biden's mostly won in red states. Yes. Which which tells you which tells, not not all of his wins were red states, but a lot of them. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Yeah, a number a number of the states that Biden won the most delegates in, he will not vote Democrat in the general. I've got it. So
So... I can Uro into Fibblethip here, which I think is the line. I can also just get Tamio going. Yeah, that's, that's almost certainly the line. Let's just get Tamio digging for Akisa so we can combo kill them. They could be, they could not be blue-white control, but they're, they're probably blue-white control, right? Yep, yep, getting sealed away is not great. You're right, shouldn't have attacked last turn. Uh, are they dead? Good chance they're dead. Not not fully dead this turn, but definitely agree that they probably can't win the game anymore. All right, I'm going to board like they're a control deck, and we can adjust after the fact if they're not. So the control plan is Tashar, Jace, Ashiok. We board out the Othakayas. Yes, I, I guess leaving it one Ruinous Blast is probably fine in a post-Banishing uh, post Light world. Again, Magic Arena feature, the animation from the opponent's sleeve appears on my borderless cards during sideboarding. So I mouse over here and you see that hand animation, whereas I mouse over this and it zooms in. You actually can't zoom in on your borderless cards while sideboarding because of this bug. So you get pop-ups for the non-borderless cards and you just get their animation for the bordered card for are you for the borderless ones i mean to be fair that bug is like super minimalistic in terms of like who it impacts and how much it impacts them I mean, Illicet, to a degree, what you're saying there is FUD. So, like, what you're saying there is the same basic argument people use against raising minimum wage. And the idea that if you give the lowest people on the totem pole more money, everything inflates proportionally and it's like no one got more money is just, like, patently untrue. You're, you're right that there would be some inflation, but implying that like if universal basic income happened or minimum wage went to $15 an hour, that's a, it's an effective like nothing happened for most people. It's just like not correct. That, that sweet hand animation on the sleeve where it's supposed to be. You like brazen borrow word here? Nope. Fleet on Fibblethip. Oh, God. I just... I... I almost tapped the right land, too, and then I untapped it and I dragged it out, so I can't cast Laziv now, because this land doesn't cast Laziv. That's... Okay, this is actually a good draw, though, because it lets me cast Uro, at least. Since it is working out okay. Filling our graveyard up. We got a couple arrows here to escape back out. I think thankfully this is a no justice stream. You yeah, had the auto tapper knew. It knew it was coming up. Never forget chat, the shuffler's as rigged as the earth is flat. Shuffler, shuffler's on our side, it's working for us. I am gonna risk a seal away now, because I do think it's important to pressure this Tefri off the table. Do you want me to phase you out of time? I'm 
Really? That's... That's interesting. Okay, do I just do this now? Maybe just replay this. You have a dispute? Scatter, okay. I think I'm in for a land here, actually. Seal Away plays a little bit better with five mana Tefri than Baffling End does because Seal Away has flash. So you can like plus your five mana Tefri and then play Seal Away after he untaps your lands. Which is the real upside he has. Hey, Greyhound Dog, I appreciate the half of your support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. If they counter this, I get to copy Uro and then smack their Tefri and draw a card, which is great. And again, like, this is a good example of our opponent sitting here disrupting us, but we're just kind of sitting here grinding out value while they disrupt us. And, like, should they answer this, I, like, have two Uros in my bin that I can actually escape. We just drew a Tamiyo. We have more labs. So, like, we have a pretty endless value train here, even if they continue to disrupt us from the ability to combo. Yeah, this deck's very reasonable. If you haven't seen this deck before and you've been enjoying historic content, that means you haven't checked out my website jeffhoagland.com, click historic decks at the top. There's a number of historic decks up there that I think are fun and reasonably competitive as well. Land draw here is actually great because it means if they counter this, I can play Tamiyo. And when they don't counter it, I think I still play Tamiyo. Oh, dispute. Yeah, maybe I should play around that. Maybe I'm just supposed to, like, escape a row there if I'm going to play into a dispute. Hey, chat. Hey, chat. Moments. Moments before the accident. Bye, friends. We're going to play the land, copy Uro, attack for six, draw a card. Yeah, yeah, Laz, Laziv, Laziv copying Uro is just like chef's kiss. Very, very good. Royal Rainbow, thank you for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoaglandia. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday wherever you're at in the world. This deck, this deck, it's got a lot of neat lines in it, relatively competitive, lots of, lots of different dynamic ways to end the game. Just what more, what more could you ask for, really? Yeah, the problem with Grixis, with Laz copying Croxa, is that you're still playing Grixis, which tends to not go well. Yeah, I agree, Bob. I think this deck, is, this archetype is genuinely good. I'm keeping the speculative hand... If we draw a non-blue source, I can cast Kesis and Blast. If we draw a blue source, the hand is quite good. Oh, you know what? I should lead on Overgrown Tomb because Overgrown Tomb casts Laz and Temple Garden doesn't. Small mistake. I did that earlier today, too. That's the part where we never draw a third land and dime. Sounds about right. Hey, Blam Pirate. Thank you for the 10 months of support. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Playing against a fellow whale here. 
Perfect. So, what do I want to do here? Oh. It might be right to just like Tefri tempo them. That gives me the best chance of hitting a land drop next turn too. Like obviously they get to just stomp and kill Tefri next turn, but it like sets them back a significant amount. Yes, I am going to dye my beer blue, Ninja Killer. We did hit that goal on the donation on the donation stream. Getting getting my beard professionally dyed takes three to four hours. I've not had a chance to get it set up to get in yet. So I couldn't, I couldn't sequence these the other way to get the mill to because Diligent does not turn on Mox. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, I wonder if they're playing the red black deck Marty submitted. It looks like it. There is a chance we just win the game next turn if we're really lucky. This, this could go a long way towards making us really lucky. It gives us six looks here. Need to find a mox here with this. If we find two moxes, we're incredibly likely to win. Oh, swinging a minute, miss on another mox, huh? That's unfortunate. I do at least get to kill this. We are dead to another Angrath. Rough. I think that's the play to win line. If we hit Moxes there, we have a chance to just full combo off, which I think is correct to take that risk on. Tashar and Tulsmere both seem fine here. If they're a Croxa deck, maybe I'm supposed to board in Ashiok. I could, I could see that. Is it an Othakaya matchup? I guess Oath deals with Phoenix if they have it. It can finish their finish their their thing. I'm gonna trim a couple of these, but leave two in. Rage Alar, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. Just trim Fibblethip because he's filler. Seems fine. Maybe I don't want two of these. That's probably a little bit too much. Yeah, the cost of bringing in Ashiok is low-ish. The problem is they can just attack Ashiok. Like if Ashiok just, like I can't always protect Ashiok is the issue. Maybe it's better than grinding with... Maybe Ashok is better than grinding with Tashar. They are, they are kind of aggressive. Yeah, let's try this. I know keeping and hoping to hit a color didn't work out well last game, but I have two castables this time through.
There isn't, I don't have four color avatars, Luzzies. I don't have three color avatars either. Generally, generally speaking, I um, use the base two colors for three color decks. Well, it's just like, it's not worth it. Cause like, if you look at, if you look at actual magic card frames, they're all just gold for three plus colors. So the only thing that would change is the casting costs. Well, it's going to be one of those games, I guess. Now, anything over four, anything over four, I do five colors for. Three, three color decks, I generally, uh, three color decks, I generally uh, use the two dominant colors. Feeling kind of dead. I get. I guess. I guess if I find. I if I find another another green source and they get aggressive with this, we might be okay. I think I just say no blocks here, so this way they pump and kill the Ashiok. So this way if we draw an untapped green source, we Toll Smear, kill the knight. I think that's our shot to get back in this game here. Is that, is that, is that, uh, is that, is that command too strong or not, not strong enough? Is there a chance that that command is not strong enough? I feel, I feel like I could go either way. <laughs> okay. Riders, more Ashioks, Angraths. You can float mana with the Mox in response to your Uro sacrificing, but that still requires a second green because I need a green to play the Mox out initially.
I I would bet money that war, that Warren will stay in till the end. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I hope my read on that's incorrect. And that I'm I'm off base in that expectation, but I would I would bet I would bet that she's staying in till the end. It feels it feels like she's just there to play spoiler at this point. Felt that felt that way before Super Tuesday. If she stays in after, that's what she'll be doing. So I could have played Tolsmir there, but they left up an activation on this knight. With the Tamiyo draw to recover the Ashiok, they're down to 25 cards. Depending on what these cards are here and how they draw, we could realistically deck them this game. Well, Slick, thank you for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. You think she'll drop soon but won't, won't endorse? I'd be okay with that too. I think if she actually stands for progressive values, she'd endorse. But I'd be I'd be okay with a just drop. Decking them is normally the plan. This is just different means. Fair. Huh. There's 32 cards in my deck. Oh, does anybody remember? Did I leave Ruinous Blast in my deck during sideboarding? I can't remember. They're all on the board? Yeah, that's what I thought. Do I keep Ashiok or do I keep Tamiyo? Think I'm supposed to keep Tamiyo? It's a tough choice. There's a lot of permutations of things here. In, in, and again, in Biden's defense, the turnout for last night was incredibly high. Even though I will be voting Bernie, I encourage all of you to do the same. I think there's a very good chance that Biden will beat Trump in the general based on last night's turnout in the states that he had. If that, if that can happen in the general, I think that's the, the path to, to winning, winning the nomination. Um, there's two Othakayas in my deck, right? I think I left two of those in, so I'm going to plus this for Oath. Because if I find an Oath, I can clear out their board. Okay, and then we get to Tolsmere, eat the knight here. Perfect. That was a that was a that was a sick game of magic. Just like really, really weird dynamic overall, huh? A lot of lot of good back and forth. Wasn't quite sure where we were at angle wise. Okay, so I think based on the fact that we saw so many Ashioks out of them, I think trimming Uro makes a lot of sense here. What do we what do we think of that? I think I think that's reasonable. I think a couple of Ruinous Blasts might be okay. Honestly, the last Tolsmere might be okay too. Let's split let's split Oath 3-2 with Tolsmir. What do we what do we think of this board plan? Thanks for thanks for going out and doing that, Jace. Glad glad you took it took the initiative to get involved. Glad I could encourage you to do that.
So, Excavator's, like, really good in terms of trying to combo, but I think that's pretty unlikely to happen in this matchup, so I think I'm gonna bottom that for now. In fact, maybe I was supposed to trim some Excavators during sideboarding. That, that's probably what I, I was, like, struggling to find my last couple of board cards. I think that might have been the correct, the correct play. I'm bottoming this. No, I guess it's my third blue source. Now, nah, this is a third blue source, right? Yeah, I'm gonna bottom this. Let's try and find some more spells or bin this. Oh, I'm dumb. That was a free block, right? I didn't I didn't pause to uh to think about if they had a land or not here. Bone Crusher would have killed it. Okay, that's fair. That's a fair assessment. Feels like we're in a good spot here. They're ignoring my Jace. Yeah, that seems good for me. So I could do this. And then I could Isolated Chapel kill one of these. Again, really just seeing some of the strength of our flexible interactive fair game plan here. I do need to worry a little bit about milling myself too much. Although I also can't really mill them. They like stick an Ashiok here. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. I mean, I, I can't mill them, right? Maybe I'm supposed to. Yeah, just like give them a Croxa. Wow, they just straight up... Okay, so... I guess I start with... I think I'm going back to milling myself here with the Jace. Maybe this is ambitious. That's a good draw. Oh, I could return Oath. Oh, I'm so dumb. Yeah, I just straight up missed that. I was so, I was so caught up in my headspace that I, yeah, just... Uh, obviously, killing the knight was better than bouncing it. I have, have the three mana and everything. Yeah, wow, it's embarrassing. I 
No, it's still 21 cards in my deck. This only draws seven. Uh, so, Jace Alt can win next turn, I believe, because, unless they have a Rider. If they don't have a way to kill Jace here, I believe we're good to go next turn. I have 14 cards. It'll be a little short. This draw is seven. They're exiling my graveyard. This is smart. This is smart. They're getting rid of my other excavator. So there's one mox in here, two mox in here. So there's one mox left in my deck. There's both my fibble thips are in exile, right? How many of my Tefries are in here? One, two. Only two of my Tefries are in here. So that means there's another one of those left in my deck. What if I draw seven here? Eleven cards in my deck. This mill's three. God, I'm one short. One of these is Tefri, right? Yeah, sweet. Okay, so Tefri's lethal. What a sick set. And then we win. We win with Jace's alt text. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a good set of games. Yeah, I like, I like this deck a lot. I think this build, build super reasonable. This is one of the many sweet historic decks you can find up on my website if you haven't seen this one played before. We're going to go ahead and call it a day there because we've been playing this one for almost an hour and a half and that's about my goal to play most things with. You can find lots more matches with this deck up there as we iterated through it over time. I did cite out the Uros because they had Ashiok. So game two, I kept some Uros in and they were super awkward. In game three, game three, I boarded them out for some other tools. And I think, I think that was correct. So yeah, I feel like this is a good mix of things. Uro plus Othakaya plus Ruinous Blast gives you this really sweet, like interactive backup plan, especially against the aggressive decks. Uro grinds out control decks along with Tamio pretty well. Tefri insulates you against uh, opponent's interaction while also bouncing permanent based hate cards like Raftigger's Cage and Leyline of the Void. So all I think again, this deck is a little bit worse of a linear combo deck than the Breach deck. I do think its backup plan doesn't mean it's just strictly worse so much as it's just different. All right. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and hit a quick add roll while we get set up for the next deck. When we get back, we are going to explore some new ideas potentially here in the Red Black Titan deck that I've been enjoying a lot in Standard. So back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.